Isn't Slack awesome, by the way? So much fun. Yes. Okay. Um, okay, hold on. Let's see. I'm just going to start muting people. All right. Cool. So I thought we'd start with this lab. Um, and kind of like one of the, the themes of the, of, of the intro to Ruby track is that we're basically building all of the components one by one uh, of, tic of a tic-tac-toe game. I think that programming is very much about like breaking something apart and then putting something back together. And it's kind of like a wax on, wax off type of effect where you might not realize how this lab works into building a tic-tac-toe command line game, but it's just one component and we go kind of one lesson at a time. So this is kind of, a, oh, that's a study group invite. That's cool. I'm like so proud of our team. I love this feature. I'm so excited about it. Um, but uh, so this is basically like the first kind of lab is both like just getting you comfortable in programming and like thinking about what a program is and, and how these mechanics work. And then also uh, trying to get you to start building one of the first features of a tic toe game, which is basically the ability to like um, welcome the user, things like that. Okay, just give me one second because I'm muting people because uh, there's like some really distracting feedback, as I mentioned before. Okay, cool. So uh, I'm going to open this lab. Just, uh, awesome. Hey. Yep. Ooh. Question? Hmm. Cool. We're going to be able to learn for our students. Okay, perfect. Um, and then I'm going to clone this lab down. And then, by the way, there's like a chat feature in this, and I get notified if you guys have a chat or if you raise your hand, and then I can answer questions. Um, so let's start with our first lab. Okay, so one of the ways in which we organize kind of uh, these challenges on learn, and by the way, this is my terminal, and if you're using Nitrous, it might look a little different, but this is basically my computer, and so I can like, you know, PWD, we can do like some fun stuff like CalSay. No, no, no exclamation marks, and then you get a CalSay. We can also do like C matrix, but that's like my command line. And the command line, you know, if you've been experienced with this, is this kind of like the programmer's workbench. So this is my text editor, Adam, um, by the GitHubers. So this is where we're going to write our code in. And this, if you look at this project over here, we have two directories. <laughs> this is actually my program, the file lib welcome.rb. And then in the spec file, we have our tests. And our tests are kind of the way we communicate to you our expectations of what passing this lab is. So if we kind of read this, and you know, with programming, I always feel like it's like a suspension of disbelief. You have, to, you have to read things you don't necessarily understand and just try to like interpret them the best of your ability. So like, you know, if I'm reading this, uh, this test suite, I might not know how it works or what's going on and what describe is and what do is and things like that, but at least tell me that like, we're building a file called libwelcome.rb and it needs to print welcome to tic-tac-toe and that we expect something called standard out to receive puts with welcome to tic-tac-toe. And then we can kind of see this as make sure lib welcome.rb has code that can output welcome to tic-tac-toe. Um, and then it says we're loading that file. So if I read this, I kind of think like, well, you know, the file lib welcome.rb should um, have something to do with welcome to tic-tac-toe, right? And the idea is that we're trying to greet the user. And by user, I mean the person playing our game. So like if you think about building your tic-tac-toe game, kind of step one is say hello, right? And that's kind of what we're building right now. So if I go to this file over here, it says edit this file to output welcome to tic-tac-toe. Um, the way we output stuff in Ruby is using a command called put, which actually stands for output string, because that's the kind of thing we're sending to our terminal. We're sending output in string format. So I'm gonna say puts welcome to tic-tac-toe. Um, I'm also not, see that blue, blue dot over there? That's basically whether this file is saved. I'm not going to save it right now because the first thing I actually want to do is run my tests. So if I type in learn in my command line, it's basically going to run this file over here and check to see did the code we write meet these specifications. Um, and right now, and this is kind of like, I know that as a beginner, it's really intimidating to see errors, to see things being broken because in life, like things being broken is like really stressful. 
But in programming, the default state of everything is broken. Um, and we need to get really good at like being comfortable with broken things because if it was working, we wouldn't be, we wouldn't be talking. So like, you know, just think about that. The default state of any program is that it's broken. Um, so, hold on a second. A ton of noise. I know it's hard to meet people. Sorry. Give me one second. Okay. It needs to be like a mute all command on Ring Central. Oh my god, there's so many of you. It's so much fun. Cool. All right. All right. Awesome. So this is broken, and that's okay. And we can see why it's broken. It says, Lib, welcome to Tic-Tac-Toe. Should print, welcome to Tic-Tac-Toe. There's a failure. It's not working. That's totally normal. So now when I actually, and if we see that, like, you know, running our tests is not actually running our program. This is our program. If I say Ruby, lib welcome dot RB, my program is just not doing anything. And we know that what we want it to do is say hello to us. So we programmed that already right over here. And now when I actually save this file and I run my program again, it says welcome to tic-tac-toe, which is step one in building tic-tac-toe. And then if I run learn, and just to speed things up, I'm actually just going to run something called rspec, which is the link we write our tests in. And now we can see that it's all green and everything is passing and we're super happy. And that's kind of the workflow we want you thinking about, which is you run your tests through learn or rspec, whichever command you want. You'll see that it's broken and don't panic. And then it's your job to basically read these failures and read these error messages and understand what we're looking for. So between these tests and kind of like the readme, um, you know, that's how you know what you're trying to build. So that's kind of the first in our labs of tic-tac-toe is that we wanted to be able to greet the user. Um, so that works now. And we can jump to the next tic-tac-toe lab. Any questions so far about anything? Please like. It's so much more fun if you guys ask questions and if you use the chat or whatever you want. Um, you know, that'd be a little more fun. Yeah, go for it, Rebecca. Um, okay, hi. I, I was doing the, the, I got halfway through the lessons for Intro to Ruby. Mm -hmm. And on that one, I couldn't find the library file. So I kept getting an error. Yeah, so, you know, it's, it's hard, like, uh, <laughs> I mean, what I always say is like uh, when my dad was teaching me how to drive, he would always yell at me to like be aware of my surroundings um, and like knowing where you are, you're, you're at. Like we try to make, we try to package everything like kind of neatly and like, um, I don't know if you're using a Mac or nitrous, but. Nit well, nitrous. Yeah. So let me actually, you know what? Let's do it like that. Give me one second. I'm going to switch myself to nitrous. I can't promise it's going to work, but. Um, I'd like to mirror your your situation because I think that'll help you guys a little more if we use nitrous because um, OSX is really nice. Um, Alex, there's no difference between RSpec and Learn. The difference is that Learn reports your test passes to us, um, and RSpec just runs the test suite. Okay. Okay. Um, all right, my environment is now nitrous. Cool. And now if I go back to this lab, all right, cross your. Cross your fingers. I don't use nitrous a lot, so I hope this just works. Okay. Magic, maybe, I don't know. Mm, that didn't work. Let's see, hold on. I'm gonna, I, I wanna get it working in nitrous. I should have set that up in, in the beginning to just use nitrous, because I know a lot of you guys are on that. Okay. I, had, I had two out of three. I had the terminal, I had the code space, but in the, left side I couldn't find the library file okay cool well it looks like my nitrous container is working which is great news so now I'll be able to do this through nitrous okay which is gonna be awesome cool okay so um, you see how like uh, there's that this is called a tilde character it's like the squiggly line right that kind of equates to like being at the top level of my of my this is my file browser this is my terminal so right I type ls here you can see it says I'm in a directory called code. Right. And if we look at nitrous, that's basically that directory. And there's okay. a labs directory, right? Okay. So, you know, on one level, you need to have the right directory open up in the side over here and the right directory in your terminal. So okay. I'm going to 
grab, I'm going to start, I'm going to close, I'm going to go into my code directory. And now if I see that there's two folders in here, LS stands for list mm -hmm. and I'm asking it to show me the folders and there's labs and there's example, which kind of corresponds to that. I'm in the code directory over here. There's example. And those are those two folders. Now I want to go into my lab folder. So I type in CD, which is change directories. And I move into that. And that's basically equivalent to like expanding that list. So now if I say LS, you'll see that all the folders I have are all these labs. Okay. And I'm going to put in a new lab. Okay. So now you see how a new folder appeared. So welcome. That's right. So now the next thing I need to do is I'm still in this labs directory. I'm still up here. So I need to go into that folder. So what I just did was I typed in CD and then I started typing in TTT. But it's a really long folder name, so I just actually hit my tab key and it auto completed that, which is a nice, okay. you know, go quicker. Um, Harris, why do you think TTT? It stands for tic tac toe, right? Um, okay. So, uh, it's, so it's, in, yeah. it's fun. Thank you. I, it's funny. I didn't have the problem with the hello, the first one, the first exercise. Hello, hello world. Yeah. But then for the second exercise, I couldn't. So actually, find when we do the next one, I'll kind of show you probably why that happens. But okay. now, you know, let's just solve this one more time. So this is the file I want to edit. I am now both in this directory in my terminal and in this folder. And over here, if I say uh, puts welcome to tick code, and then I saved it, I hit, uh, I you know, just you can do file, save, but there's command S or control S if you're on Windows. Um, and that's that file. And now to run that file, I type in Ruby. Welcome. This is called a path. It describes how to get to a file. If I'm in this directory, think about what you need to click on in order to get to that file. If I want to run that file, I need to first click on lib and then on welcome. So that's what I typed in over here. It's basically the path from this directory to that file. And now it says welcome to tic-tac-toe. And if I run rspec, um, it gives me that. You guys probably won't get that, but you know, just follow the, it says bundle install. If you run that, it'll just work. Don't worry about what all that did. It's cool, but we'll do it another time. And there, that lab is green. So now I can move on. So whenever I move labs, what I want to do is basically just type in CD and press enter and go back to my home directory. That way I'm back at the top level of my file system and now I'm back over here. So I can kind of start the process like fresh. So let's see what, <coughs> um, what the next lab is. Is Nitrous like Sublime Text? Yeah, so it's actually more than like Sublime Text. This part of Nitrous is like Sublime Text and this part of Nitrous is like your terminal, um, which is this part. So this is Sublime, it's my editor what we call an IDE, or an Integrated Development Environment. So this is, down here is my environment. It's the, it's the computer that's running my code. This is just a text editor. It's a program that's running in this browser. So Nitrous is kind of like everything packaged in one, exactly. Right. So the next lab we want to do is in variables. Yeah, tic-tac-toe board. All right. I'm just going to mute people because but feel free to unmute yourself whenever. Just again, that feedback is very distracting to me. Uh, <laughs> right. I don't know how to mute them all. No, that was muting me. Uh, Audio conference. What does that do? Nope, that's not it. <laughs> Hold on. Settings. Nah. I don't know a way to mute everybody. Oh, wait, I do. I found it. Cool. I now know how to mute you all. Okay, so that'll be way easier. But feel free to unmute yourself, especially if you want to ask a question. Okay? Yeah, I'm good with computers. I've been told that. All right, so we're going to do this lab now. And I'm going to try to click on this button. I don't know if it works. Oh, look, it does. That's awesome. I love my team. They're amazing. They build magic. Um, yeah, actually, I've always wanted to try Twitch for this kind of thing. Um, it's harder to chat and like, um, like see your faces on Twitch. And uh, I know it's weird, but I like it's very it's way easier for me to lecture when I actually can like see people respond and smile and like, you know, make a hum face and things like that. Okay. All right. So now I'm in a new tab in 
my terminal. And I am getting oriented, so I want to find the directory ttt2board.rb. Um, and if I click on code and labs, and there is the folder I want. So I always like to kind of read the specs a little bit and kind of get a sense of what this is looking for. <clears throat> so it says that I want describing a file called libboard that defines a local variable board. Okay, so my first requirement, I need to create a local variable board. And in fact, I'm gonna kind of code along with this one too. So I opened that file board, mostly because the spec said that in the file libboard, which is this file over there, there should be a local variable. So board, um, that's not valid code yet, but at least I typed in what I know. I know I need that variable. And then it says that board is set to an array. Um, and it says, you know, board, get variable from file, from this file, that variable, and I expect it to be an array. Um, so an array is kind of like a list of things, or like a bucket to put data. Because often, data comes in sets. Like when I think about a tic-tac-toe board, and how I'd represent that, you know, in terms of like programming, this is a board. And in the board is, are cells. Like that's cell one, that's cell two, that's cell three. And what I want to basically figure out is to how do I represent this idea as data in my program? So like in theory, um, I could do something like, you know, uh, like um, cell one equals X. And then I could do like cell two, cell, oh, sorry, one, right? Two equals, uh, it's whatever, empty. Cell three is an O. And if you and then like let's say cell four, cell five is O. Um, uh, one second. Cell six. This is why we don't use single variables for this stuff because it's super slow. Cell seven equals X. Cell eight equals O. Cell nine. All right, so if this is my board. Hey, Avi, real quick. Yeah. Why the underline uh, right underneath the, uh, the last L? Just cell? convention, actually. I'm, um, I'm just, just saying I'm it's a convention. OK. Uh, it's an underscore, and it just separates it. In Ruby, we like white space. So I want my things to be readable. So like, I okay. could name this variable cell one, but like now it looks all squished, and it's hard to read. Right. And like, you know, that just looks nicer. And okay. what I'm thinking is, like, if you think about the metaphor that we're using, if these are our variables, what I'm trying, I always think of, like, in terms of, like, stories, I guess. So, like, if that's our board, like, what is, what is the game state of this configuration of data? Has anyone won the game? Yeah, so let's, let's, let's start doing cell one. This is an X. Mm -hmm. Cell, this is blank. This is an O. Right, this is an X, this is an X, this is an O, this is an X, that's an X, that's an O. This is, these variables are telling this story about a tic-tac-toe game. Mm. That's what I mean by the idea of like representing data. That we know this is what you did. Like when you play tic-tac-toe with your friends and you draw it in, you're storing data about the state of the game. We're representing that data because a computer or programming languages, they can't know about things like tic-tac-toe. We're teaching it about tic-tac-toe through this data. But what I don't like about this is that now if I wanted to like check if someone won, these, these variables over here, they're related to each other. They're not other variables. Like I could have another variable called name equals Avi, and this variable is not related to this one. Mm -hmm. But you see how these are all prefixed with the word cell? They're mm -hmm. clearly all related to each other. So the idea of storing the data about a board as individuals just doesn't make sense. It's not the right metaphor because there's one board with nine cells. So in programming, we have this idea of a data structure, which are ways to store data. And uh, this is my Ruby terminal. So like, imagine if I wanted to say uh, my favorite colors. I could say my favorite color number one is red. And then my favorite color, number seven, is green. And these, these don't relate to each other. We don't, there's no 
there's nothing in the programming environment that is created. Like if I say color one, I get back red. But what if I say color three? Oh, well, I forgot to define that because everything has been separated or deconstructed where it's hard to know what Avi's favorite colors are. So we have another kind of variable or another kind of data structure called an array. And they start with brackets. And now I can say red, blue, green. <laughs> right? Yeah. And this is called an array, like okay. a list, right? It's many That's values in one. That's sick. <laughs> it is sick, Harris. Oh, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> no, nah, I'm super into it. Um, <laughs> Colors, right? So that's three, right? And now also now because they're all grouped together, I can do some other cool things. Like I can be like colors dot size. And it tells me, oh, there are three colors. And now, now that they're all grouped together though, how do I know what my favorite color is? Right? So the way you know, because now I don't have the kind of, what was nice about having everything separate was if I wanted one value, it was easy to get one value. But if I wanted all the values, it was hard to get all the values. Right. Now we've created kind of like the other problem. It's easy to get all the values, but how do I just get one of them? Separate them, yeah. <clears throat> this is called an index. When we create a list of things, we count the position. Okay? And I know you, we've, we've all been told that the first number is one. That is not the first number. The first number is zero. Okay? Zero is the first number. So this is the zero position of this list, of this array. And basically, the same way we use brackets to create the list, we also use brackets to read an element. These are called elements. So each element in this list, we refer to it by its position, which is called an index. And it's zero. And the metaphor I like to think about, like, you know, we all like do taxes, we all have like filing cabinets. You know when you open up your filing cabinets, there's a whole bunch of folders? You could say, hey, get me the seventh folder. And the person would be like, okay, counting, and then they'd get the seventh folder. That's what we're doing. We're reaching into this filing cabinet and we're saying, give me the first folder that we call zero. So when I press enter, what do you think I'm going to get back? Which color? Right. Programming, right? And now, how would I get, let's, let's just use the pattern. How would I get green back? What number would I have to send? Two. Exactly. Cool. Those are called arrays, okay? Those are an array or a list. That's what it's about. So now we're reading data out of this. So the way we want to construct our tic-tac-toe board is basically a board. We want to call the variable board, and we want to make an array with nine empty spaces. How many do I got? That's three. Um, I think I'm at seven. Then I hope I'm at seven. Eight. Two, four, six, seven, nine. Nine. Here's how I'm going to check. Awesome. Cool. So now, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. so now the question is like, um, okay, so how would I ask this? This is basically the whole lab, but let's just go a little further. Um, what element is the middle of the board? So zero is the top left corner, top middle corner, top right corner, middle left column. That's the middle one. So zero, one, two, three, four. So if I say board four, I'm asking for what token or what character, what value is in the middle of the board. Okay? Um, awesome. So now, how do I – the question is now that this is created – how do I update the state of the board? Like if we think about, well, actually, let's stop there. Let's, let's move on because we're going to go to the next lab and it solves it. So I'm just going to type in exit and move out of, this is called IRB. And, uh, you know, pay attention always what your prompt looks like. When it says IRB, you're in a Ruby environment, right? So like, you know, Ruby is really good at things like, for instance, one plus one. Ruby can interpret that as a programming language. And if I press enter, it'll say two. When I exit Ruby, now I'm back in my command line, which is like a whole other universe. I might have well like crossed into an, an uh, alternate dimension. And now if I say one plus one, this universe has no idea what I'm talking about. Okay? <laughs> so this is like my computer, and this is Ruby. 
Ruby knows, understands Ruby. My computer does not understand Ruby natively. So when I type in IRB, I'm entering what's called an interactive Ruby prompt. And it looks like that. And now I can type in Ruby, like one plus one. And then I type in exit to go back to my computer. Um, okay? So uh, I want to run our spec and make sure this passes. And it gives me that stupid, annoying error, which is awesome. Ah. I can't wait to get off nitrous. Let me type R spec, awesome. And then I can say learn. Well, we'll just move on. Well, actually, yeah, we'll do learn submit. And it basically submits it. And we can watch, you know, um, all of that happen. And we'll move on to the next lesson. All right. So let's go to the next tic tac toe lesson. So we got variables, and now we're at methods. Ah, we want to display the board. So um you know, I think that we have kind of like two things in our program. What we've been playing right now is basically with data, right? So like this idea of board, it, it's representing like a game state of data. And now what I want to do, work. Oh, awesome. Problem clone this lesson. Beautiful. Oh, wait, it's trying again. Can't clone right now. Beautiful. Thank you, Nitrous. Super helpful. Cool. Let me clone this. OK. Nope, not my computer, Nitrous. Um, does using Mac make it easier to learn? So yeah, it's the same. I mean, just using a computer you can control that isn't connected to the internet the whole time the way Nitrous is is just easier and it's faster. And like, you know, yeah, I mean, as Matt says, the experience on Mac is a little bit more reliable. OK, <clears throat> so I'm going to clone this down. Nope, I did not copy that URL correctly. Cool. So I was saying kind of like, I always think there are two parts of programming. One is creating data, and the next is creating procedure. So like, if I look at this file now, we go into TTT3, display board. This is basically like the next step in a tic-tac-toe game, where when I run this file, not only I should basically see like, you know, the way that we're presenting this board, which is kind of this ASCII. So the goal is to kind of build the next step of tic-tac-toe, which is, um, and I've already, this, so, you know, this is what it would be. It'd be like, you know, puts, cool. And then um, I'm just going to use something a little fancy for a second. OK, cool. So um, now I get this program. And now if I run lib display board, cool, it prints a board. But think about how many times in a tic-tac-toe game are you going to need to print a board? Because right now, every time I want to print a board, I need to basically copy this code. And I'm going to say, like, puts. Turn one happens, and now I need to print a board again, right? And now imagine, like, you know, I always think again about telling a story with my programs. So now turn two, and oh, you know, and all of its brilliance goes in the top left corner, which is like such a funny move. Like, what an amateur, right? And then, you know, X is setting up a trap, right? Mm, I don't know if I can trap it. All right, whatever. We'll do there, okay? And uh, right, so the idea is that, that now when I run this program, it's going to tell me about three turns in tic-tac-toe, right? Where like the board was printed in the beginning, turn one happened and X went there, turn two went O, and that's turn three. Would you say that every turn of the game, I'm going to need to print the board? And if every single time I need to print the board, I need to take these four lines of code or five lines of code and copy them, I'm going to shoot myself in the head. So how do we? You know, if variables store data, how do we store the idea of printing the board? How can I build something in my program that every single time I want to do the same thing, I can just be like, yes, methods, exactly, right? Methods are a way to basically encapsulate or remember how to do something, right? And I can say, I want to build a method called display board. And every single time I now use the word, display board in my program, what it means is printing out this characters of board. 
and that's it. And now I can say puts welcome to tic tac toe. And then I can say display board. So we're going to talk about the kind of structure here, but this line of code, def is a Ruby keyword. It creates a new thing in your program, a new word. The new word that I just defined is the word display board. So this is kind of like building a machine, right? I've built my machine. However, when you build a machine, is it automatically on? No. You have to actually turn the machine on and like press a button. And the way we turn our methods on, the way we actually get them to run, or what's called invoke them, is simply by calling them by name. So when I say display board, we will see the board, right? And if I say display board again, and display board again, and display board again, that's way quicker. It's like way shorter, or what's known as do not repeat yourself. I don't need to re-express these five lines. I get basically like a shortcut to that by just saying display board. So now when I run my program, how many times are we going to see the board? Four. Four. Yeah. yeah. Right? And there it is. But now, in the same way as like when we move from like those single variables to like the list, we create another problem because now there's a problem. Well, how do I, if, if this is like, it's always going to print that, how do I change what display board does? Right? Because like, you know, turn one happened, X went in the middle, right? How's that going to work? Because every time I say display board, it always prints an empty board, right? Like if X went in the middle and I say display board and then I say puts turn two happens, O went in the top left corner. Yeah, that's right. Arguments, right? So this, this creates a new deficiency in where we're at in our programming is that we can't marry this idea between, like if I have a board, you know, so turn one happens. So here's my board, right? Um, okay, so now we know that zero, one, two, three, four, right? So that's what the board means. And then if turn two happens, we, the next place we should be is basically where board is now, they went in the top left corner, so O. Oh. The question is, how do I marry these two things together? I have my data in my variable, and then I have my method. And somehow this method needs to understand the board in order to accurately represent the board when it prints it. Does that make sense? I need a way to get this inside of here so that when I call display board, it's actually using the data right there. And those are called arguments. Right, I'm gonna use the index when I want to print it, but the first job is like, you know, if I just start saying like, for instance, in here, we know this is index zero. Um, I'm gonna explain what this character is in a second, but let's talk about why this wouldn't work, right? Because Liz, you're totally right. We should be using the index. There's something in programming called scope. Right, um, and you know, I don't know how to explain it besides to say that, like, um, we only there are only so many words, right? And uh, you need to be able to get yes. Yeah, so this is called interpolation. You're totally right, but this idea, this is like my main program. Let's call it the main universe. This universe over here, when I'm inside on line two, and I'm inside this method. I am no longer in the main universe. I am in the display board universe. And things that exist in this universe do not exist in this universe. They're totally separated. They're like isolated sandbox or silos, right? So the first question is, and if I run this program now, we're going to see the error. Close. You're very close. Um, Let's read this error, okay? So it says on line four of displayboard.rb, we have an undefined local variable or method board. So let's go look at line four. So line four is where we're saying this word board. So what this is doing, by the way, this is called interpolation. Um, you know, let's go into IRB and play with that really quick. So if I say one plus one, I get back two. But what if I say the string one plus one? Will I get back two? No. 
Because part of being a string is that Ruby shuts off its programming mind and no longer treats what you type in as code. It treats it as data. So it doesn't interpret it. So now, let's say I had a variable called a that's equal to 1. If I say a, I get back literally, it interprets this not as code, not as a reference to this variable up here, but rather as literally a. So if I have a string, which is my variable is, how do I put this piece of data a in this string? Because I can't say a, because it's going to take that literally. And that's what we call interpolation. And it's just a syntax of these brackets, where it's a pound, an open squiggly, and then anything inside this, in the closing squiggly will be interpreted by Ruby. So for instance, if I say this, do I get back the string one plus one, or do I get back two? Awesome. That's called interpolation. It is a way to inject dynamic data like variables or Ruby code into a string. So what I want to inject over here is board zero, the top left corner of my board. But when I tried doing that, we saw we got an error that for some reason, this universe of display board has no idea what I'm talking about when I say the word board, which is really weird though, because if over here, let's just run a quick test. If I say puts, I'm going to comment everything out. So pounds and Ruby code are, are comments. So you can see it turned gray. If I say over here, let me get my board, not comment that out. If I say board zero here, that works. No more error. There's nothing in that board. If I say board zero and I put, um, you know, hello, and I read that in there, we see hello. So why, why is line 15 able to access this variable by name, but line four isn't? Like, come on. That just seems really annoying. Because board's and, not defined within the method, right? That's right, Clayton. That's variable scope. Board is not defined within the methods. Method, the only thing that exists in methods are things that were made in methods, okay? Or as I like to say, you know, what's made in a method stays in a method, okay? And that's called variable scope, okay? In like, you know, non like Vegas cliches. Uh, variable scope, the area or the context, the universe in which a variable exists. This is my main universe. This is my methods universe. And they do not talk to each other unless I make them talk to each other. And the way we do that is by arguments. So I'm going to say that this method accepts an argument. And for now, actually, I'm going to call it the tic-tac-toe board. That is the name of my argument. So I update my method signature, this line of code, that first line is called a method signature, and I put parentheses, and I say that this method now accepts an argument, the tic-tac-toe board, okay? And let's just see what happens. So now, if I make a new variable in here, because um, I don't want to use these words board, right? I just want to kind of test this a little bit. Here's my variable. Okay. And now what I want to basically do is print out whatever this variable is. Okay. So it puts the tic tac toe board. So now if I say display board, I want to pass in this data. And the way I do it is using the same syntax as parentheses. So my variable. Okay. So now I always think of like, um, like uh, let me see if I can find a quick image, protein cell receptors. I don't know if you guys are into biology and stuff, but you know, being uh, a biological being, I kind of am into biology. Um, so, you know, with cell, because a lot of programming was modeled after biology too, which is kind of cool. Um, Alan Kay, the creator of object orientation says that he designed objects to work like cells in a, in a, in a system. So, this is a cell. Cells have cell walls. If, if something wants to put something inside of a cell, there's kind of like this receptor that binds to like other chemicals. And then this receptor kind of like flips and puts it inside. And that's how you get things inside of a cell. <laughs> I always think about that metaphor when I think about arguments. 
in that like we methods are like cells and the way we pass them in are through these like receptors that allow data that goes that lives in the outside world to enter the cell so like here when i say display board i am sending this information into this universe or it's kind of like a portal right where this data the string should don't tell was passed into this method but when it got passed in the name of it changed because i can't say puts even though in the outside world this data was referred to as my variable if i say puts my variable in the context of this method this name does not exist does that make sense this is like a really important concept. So if I exit here and I try to run my program again, now it says undefined local variable within my variable. It doesn't know what I'm talking about. Because in the context of this method, the data I passed in is no longer known by what it was in the outside world, my variable. It's known by what it's known in the inside world, which is the name of this argument, this word. And now it says, right, that's how we passed data in, okay? Thank you, Harris. Um, I've been teaching for like four and a half years, and I've been programming for like 15, and I try to be good at the things I do. So <laughs> don't think that like I was born A, a good programmer, or B, a good teacher. I've just been doing this for a long time, mostly because you guys are so much fun to work with. Like, it's so awesome sharing this stuff with you guys. Um, all right, so we now understand how to pass data into a method, and that's really awesome. So. Now we want to do is actually pass in our real data of our board. And also, by the way, you see how like, I'm like freely not dealing with the entire thing I'm trying to do. I'm kind of like building these little experiments. It's so easy. It's, it's easier to program when you're trying to do something like small and confirm your assumptions and like make sure you understand these mechanics. Like I think so often in, as beginners in programming, we kind of like try to really jump ahead before we really understand what's going on. And like, you can change all these things. It's okay for your program to be broken. Your goal is not to get your program working as fast as possible. It's to create as many learning opportunities for yourself as possible. And that means experimenting and playing. Like I always think about it as like getting really intimate with how my language and how my code works. And the way you get intimate is by like changing it and playing with it and like, oh, well, if I change this to an X, what else do I need to change? What happens now? Well, now, Apparently, it doesn't, well, I didn't save it. Now, it's like, hey, I don't know what my variable is because when I changed this X reference, this became undefined. So now I need to make that an X. And now does it still work? And now I'm getting like, again, that intimacy. Okay, so I want to pass this in. And there's an O in the top corner and an X in the middle of my board. And I'm going to pass in my board. And now this says the board, okay? And that's my array, that's my list. Um, by the way, is it, do you guys think that I can name, if, I'm pa if in, the, in the main universe my variable is called board, can I also call it board in this universe? Yeah, I can, right? But again, this board reference has nothing to do with this one. They just happen to share the same word, like our word, but to the computer they may as well be, this may as well be the board, okay? And sometimes making things, for some learners, making things different helps explain that. For sometimes making things the same helps explain it. But the idea is that in, in methods, your variables are totally different, okay? So now, our goal is to basically build out this board. So we're gonna read in order, in every cell over here, we're gonna replace it with the index in our list, in our file cabinet, in our array of our board. So this was zero, which goes in the top left corner. What goes in the middle? Audio or chat? One, board one, right? Yeah, board one, like that. Did I do anything wrong there? Oh, you didn't interpolate it. <laughs> That's right, I didn't interpolate it, right? Yeah. Cool, awesome. And then let's do another one. Uh, what about, uh, can I just say uh, two? Why not? Why can't I just say two? Because the, what's two? the argument wouldn't know. Yeah, we're not looking for two. We're looking for the, yeah, we're not referencing the board. 
it would take this very literally. We would just see a two in the position. And by the way, I also made another mistake, which is none of this is going to work because our variable name is board, is the board, not board. Okay? All right? So let's just play with that and see what happens now. So we have a board with the top left and a middle, and then we're saying display that board. All right, see, there it is, literal. We meant two, but really it should have been a, it should have been, yeah, exactly, right? The board, two. All right? Yeah, always just remember, minus one, okay? Zero, one, two, you get kind of used to it. And then you'll start like really annoying your friends where you're gonna be like, yeah, I'm gonna get the zero element on the menu. And they're gonna be like, what are you talking about? You mean the first? All right, all right. So what do we put over here then? And the pattern just kind of continues. And then, you know, it's always fun when programming gets a little like pattern oriented, where I can just like cut and paste the same thing because like I've confirmed that it works in one place in the mechanic that I know. Um, oh, I forgot three, awesome. It's way easier to program with you guys. I make less typos. All right, and then that's gonna be six, eight, and nine. Oh, yes, that's really good. Cool, by the way, I am, you know, one, it's been a long day, and then two, yeah, I make mistakes also, okay? Awesome, and then look, we're getting an accurate representation of the board. And now we can take the metaphor further, right? So let's start with a blank board. So that, like, you know, turn one. And uh, so it's actually, we'll display the board immediately. And then turn one. So now I'm gonna kind of like manually update the game and make a first turn have occurred. And again, we're telling a story. So X moved in the middle, tricky X. And then let's do turn two. Where do you guys want O to go? Where do you want O to go for turn two? Uh, how about nine? Or nine? Section eight. Eight. So we update eight over there. And then let's do turn three. One more turn. Where do you guys want X next move to be? All right, two. So that's this position. And now we should see that board. Right? And you see how we're slowly building these components and getting a sense of what are the discrete parts? What are the little machines that I need to build in order to make tic-tac-toe work? Okay? Um, I'm actually not going to go to the next lab because this is kind of fun. <laughs> so what's the next not realistic thing about our current game? What are we doing wrong? Why we have, to, we yeah. have to enter like a X or O into the board array individually. Right. So I think what you're saying, Clayton, is that we're not, yeah, we're using manual terms, right? We're not actually asking the person for where they want to go, right? Let's do that, okay? So over here, instead of saying, I'm going to say puts turn one. That's right, gets. And we're going to make it easy for ourselves. We're just going to say zero to eight. We're going to pretend that only programmers are playing this game and they know how to count, right? So, um, okay, cool. So now I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say, I don't know, what do you guys want to call the variable that's going to store where they went? You guys can choose. Variable names don't really matter. Yeah, played, character. So yeah, position. I like position a lot. I, I mean, the variable names don't matter. We might as well call this, you know, like what I had for dinner. Um, and we can just say equals gets dot strip. I'll talk about what strips is. Gets basically stops our program. And, oh, wait. Forgot to save. Always forget, don't forget to save your files. And you see how it, oh, no. Okay, so you see how it's waiting? That's what gets does. And by the way, get stands for get string, which means I'm asking for a string. We could use chomp. Strip is just like, uh, it clears all the white space, okay? Strip is more consistent than chomp. I would use um, strip, okay? And if there's one thing you're gonna, I hate telling people to memorize stuff, but like, just memorize gets.strip. It's what you should always do. That's right. Front and back spaces, or what we call trailing and leading, sorry, leading and trailing spaces. <laughs> so 
So now, you know, I'm going to say zero. That zero was in a variable called what I had for dinner, but that seems very confusing. And programming is hard enough. I want to use my variable names to remind me about what data they store. So I think like, you know, like move choice would be good. Position would be good. Index would be good. And I saw a lot of position, so we'll just use position, okay? So, um, so now position, I always like to also do things like this. Like position might equal zero, right? But not zero, actually, the string zero, not the number zero, okay? So now the question is, I know it's x's turn. How do I update board with an x at position or at index zero of the board? So the real question we're asking is, how do we update data in an array? Here's our board. Because we can't, you know, doing this, this is a really bad idea. It is very inconsistent. And in fact, we did not update the board. What do you think we just did? Did we update the board or did we entirely redefine it? Redefined it. Yeah, we totally redefined it. We don't want to do that. We want to maintain this board and update it. Okay? So let's make a little sandbox. I'll go back in IRB. Let's talk about my favorite colors. You know, like when I was a kid, red was my favorite color, but then I really fell in love with purple. And I want to change the value of red to purple. So first, my first question is, how do I ask this array, colors, what my favorite color is? What was the syntax for that again? We say colors, and we say bracket zero, just like we did in display board over here to read data out. So now, we know that if I wanted to say favorite color, I would do favorite color equals, and I'd say purple, right? That when we assign, when we assign data to variables in programming, we tend to use this algebraic notation of like variable equals something, right? Cool. So now if I want to update color zero, the syntax mirrors this idea of algebraic notation. If I want to change its values, I say color zero equals purple. And now if I look at colors, what's going to be in this element now? Purple. Awesome. So that's the syntax for updating data. Okay? <laughs> so one other thing about programming is this is very literal in that tell me literally what index I updated. Zero. It's right there in this line of code. Tell me what value did I update it with. Purple. It's right there. It's literal. But watch this. Okay. So pretend it's a year later and you have no idea what favorite color is what favorite color is, right? Okay? This is more abstract. There are less details about what I'm doing because what's the value of favorite color? You might remember magenta, but you don't know that for sure. It could be anything. We have no idea. It's whatever value this variable has. And now if I look at colors, we've abstracted away the assignment to be equal to this, right? So now let's say this. Um, so now I have a new variable called new favorite index. Okay? And it's equal to one. So let's go back to colors. How do I update the whatever value this is? I want to update that position to be equal to uh, here's my new color. <coughs> you know, I don't know. I'm orange. Whew. Okay, cool. So I want to update colors into the new favorite position with the value of new color. How can I do that? I want to remove all the details that are literal. So let's see, colors. What do you guys think goes in the bracket? What's the value of the index that I want to update? One. But one is literal, right? I can't use the number one. I need to use this abstraction. Yeah, exactly. New favorite index. That works because when Ruby reads this, it says, okay, what's the value for new favorite index? And then it says one. But 
new favorite index equals four. And now this, the meaning of this line of code has totally been changed. That's what I mean by abstract. And then new color. You see how there are no details? In theory, you don't actually know what the new color is, nor what the new favorite index is. These are just references to values. In fact, tell me, what's in colors right now? Because I, new favorite index was four, it added the fourth element. And what did we just learn about Ruby arrays? Would you describe them as elastic? In that when I said element four, which is the fifth position, no, we're not going to talk about reference by value. Um, but yeah, you can manipulate them and it automatically filled it in with a blank space. <coughs> um, so yeah, so let's just do this really quick. We're going to say uh, token equals x because it's x's turn. And now we have the position. And now what line of code, and mirror what we did over here. In fact, let's copy this. And let's just change references. What is the word for our array right now? Board, the board. And then new favorite index, what's the reference that, that for that? Position. And then new color is what? Token. Yeah. Cool. There's one other thing, though. Position is a string. I'm going to convert it to a number with 2i. OK? And now let's watch our game play. Where do I want to go? Zero. So look, turn one was real. Right? There's that X. Right? And then here's the weird thing though. I'm not, so if I want to do turn three or turn two, right? Do I have to copy all this code again? No. I do though. Right now I do. What are we missing? If we have a machine to display the board, don't we need like a little machine to like make a move? Oh, so yeah, like, method like, right. Yeah, like, I mean, there's a lot, there's a loop, but this idea, like, we need, I want to encapsulate this idea of asking a person for their move, updating the board. I want to encapsulate that into method first, and then I would loop. And the next lab, we just kind of skipped ahead. So first of all, we just solved, so you know, we solved uh, the display tic-tac-toe board, which is all about reading data and interpolation. And now what we'd be building is the next lab you guys got to build this is the logic of a single turn of, tic, of a single move of tic tac toe. But we need to put this in a method. Okay? And that's where I'm going to leave you guys for tonight. Because um, that was super fun, though. And we're going to plan a ton more of these. But this is the lab that we're currently on is the idea of asking for a move. Okay? Yeah. Um, cool. That was super fun, guys. I really appreciate you guys. Uh... Yeah, man. That was sick. Thank you. <laughs> man, that was your fast hour. <laughs> Yeah, yeah it was. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, man. And you're muted. Oh, I'm muted. Cool. Yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, I was saying that that was really fun. Um, I'm not going to share the code because I want you guys to program this yourselves. Like, I know that it's hard, but I promise you, man, you just got to struggle through it. It's really, programming is hard, but that's all it is. It's not impossible. And the more, I know it feels like you're not learning when everything is broken and you don't know how it's working. But you are learning at that moment. You are. It just hasn't clicked yet. Um, like, it's not linear. It doesn't go straight. It's like, I don't know what the hell is going on. And then, oh, my God, I get it. I don't know what's going on. Oh, my God, I get it. It's like these moments of epiphany that makes it fun. But the whole other time, it's just like, oh, my God. So it's tough, but that's all it is. And it's worth it because it'll change your life. It'll change the way you see yourself. And, like, just this is amazing. It's so much fun. Oh, I'll show you guys one other, uh, one other fun thing, too really quick, because I've just been playing a lot with this. Um, I'm going to share my screen again and my computer audio, because there's so many things you can do with code, OK? Um, like, do you guys like Taylor Swift? Yes. OK. So this is a library called Sonic Pi that I've been like obsessed with lately. And this is actually Ruby. So like, you know, everything we just learned, you know, this is just a Ruby console, like, puts, get ready to shake. OK? And over here, you guys can see this little console. Right, so you'll see when I hit run, nothing happens because it says studio currently rebooting error, which is awesome. Um, let's uh, just copy that code and quit out of this and start it up again.
Because, you know, when you get errors about uh, studio rebooting, you just abort and start over. Um, yeah, so someone asked about, uh, will there be like a group if we have some questions to help each other? So first, in the Slack channel, this will be open for a little bit, but you guys can study your own, your own study groups. And there's also like, you know, ask a question on learn. You guys will say like, uh, well, normally if you click on that button, you can ask a question. Um, but okay, so cool, get ready to shake. Um, so look at this box over here on the right. When I hit play, so it said get ready to shake, right? So we know this is just Ruby. And can you guys hear that? Yeah? Yeah, we can hear it. Cool. So that's 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 teaching Ruby how to play Taylor Swift. Right? Right, this is a, I have the, these are the opening chords of Adele's Hello. Yeah, there is nothing you can't do with code. It is so powerful. Um, so yeah, like, I know it's hard, but you will get good at this. You will get good at this if you just don't ever give up, okay? And it's so much fun, like, you know, yeah. So Sonic Pi is both built in Ruby and lets you program music in Ruby. There's just so many cool things, okay? All right. I'll see you guys later. Have a great night. That was super fun. We're going to do more of these. So stay on Learn. Email me. By the way, it's just avi at learn.co. Yeah, we're really excited about this. Like we are, I mean, what I love about learning is like actually hanging out with you. Like the worst part of learning is like when I'm doing it alone in my apartment at like three in the morning. This is fun. This is like social and we get to know each other and we form connections between each other and we make friends. And like, that's like the fun part of learning, you know? Yeah, you know we've sure. got to build tools to let's all hang out, okay? Yes, I'm going to send the video of this. That will happen. Okay? Awesome. Thank you. All right. Thanks, All right. guys. Have a great Thank night. You, that was awesome.